It's the battle of the resurrected brands. Fight! Psh, 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 psh. Okay, so they're just mostly resurrected for me. ZTE suffered some political issues, but they've been back for a little while. Honor suffered some political issues, but they've recently returned to more Western markets. But this year, they're delivering one of my favorite showdowns, making premium tier phones, great cameras, and some really fun, unique features. I've said this in so many videos, but one of my all-time favorite eras of smartphones was when we had the Axon 7 going head-to-head -head against the Honor 8. So this showdown is a happy return for me. All right, both of these have had a couple of updates, so how well do these powerhouse phones compare? Starting off with design, there are some crazy and expensive aesthetic choices to contrast. Honor is using a much more dramatic curve to its display and significantly softer rounded corners in the edges, but for the front of the phone has a really large pill cutout for the dual selfie cameras. The Axon screen is also curved, but not as dramatically. Now, the fancy tech for ZTE this year is hiding the selfie camera under the display. The screen effect is nearly seamless. ZTE is easily a generation ahead for hiding the camera, even if it might do some wacky things to image quality and low light conditions. Neither of these phones are offering 1440p resolution, but the Honor is closer to that resolution. But in auto brightness, the Axon can boost just a bit brighter in daylight conditions. All right, when it comes to the rear design, I like the material and look of the ZTE a little better, but the centered camera disc on the Honor is so much nicer when you put the phone down and it doesn't wobble on your desk as much. I honestly wouldn't claim that there's an outright winner for the aesthetics on a phone. They're very different, but I'm inclined to give the ZTE just a slight nod for that really cool high-tech under-display selfie camera. The Honor is really pretty, but I love seeing a screen that's completely unmarred by the selfie webcam. Honor takes an immediate lifestyle win for the ultrasonic fingerprint sensor. The ZTE has a very good optical sensor. It's quick, but the Honor fingerprint definitely takes the win for life style security. For another personal preference, I think I like the ZTE haptic motor just a little bit better. The typing effect has a bit more of a pulse, though I don't necessarily like the kind of recovery feeling that ZTE is adding to that haptic software. The Honor has a bit more of a buzzy bounce feel when you're typing, but again, this is gonna be a very personal, this is a personal preference showdown. I think I like the tighter pop on the Axon just a little bit more. Both of these phones have crazy fast charging. The Honor takes the fastest recharge with 100 watt charging. Internationally, the ZTE can hit 80, but here in the United States, we get a very respectable 65 watt charger. With a proprietary Honor wireless charger, you can get even faster wireless charging too. Honor takes the lead, but both of these phones are absolutely shaming what Samsung and Apple are putting out there. The major showdown between these two is definitely gonna be camera tech, but this is one area where I need to set up a bit of a correction. In my first look video on the Axon, I said the 40 Ultra had two 1 over 1.3 inch sensors, and apparently that's way off. Now that I can get into the phone a bit more, I think these are only 1 over 1.7 inch sensors, Still very good Sony sensors, but not nearly as large as I had originally claimed. Frustrated because the reviewer guide listed binned pixel sizes at 2.24 micron, but the phone software puts the binned pixel size at 1.8 micron. I still can't find a proper spec breakdown on the Sony IMX787, but for now, I'm gonna talk about the camera how the phone reports that camera data. It's a little confusing. I mean, the lenses that we have are enormous for that sensor size if these are one over 1.7 inch sensors. And comparisons on image quality are a little more difficult because the Axon uses a 35 millimeter equivalent lens against the Honor's 27 millimeter equivalent lens. So images appear more zoomed in from the same position. And if you're standing in the same spot, with the Axon and the Honor, Axon produces a more pleasant and shallower depth of field than the Honor. The main sensor on the Honor is a little larger, but the Axon has a faster aperture. Still, I was surprised to see how much more shallow the Axon is if it has the smaller sensor. Based on the numbers, I would not have predicted this performance. Now, as a personal preference, I like the Honor camera app 
a little better. Just how it's laid out and organized. I don't like how the Honor meters so bright, but the function of the app is snappy and quick. And there's a solid hardware benefit where the phone can shift from the main sensor to the telephoto while shooting 4K60 video in the same clip. You don't need to stop recording to switch camera sensors. And Honor's post-processing is really good at the fun stuff. Not, not just a portrait mode, but a nicely featured artificial aperture mode. But overall, I think I have to give the camera win to the Axon. It's almost perfectly consistent across all three sensors, and some recent updates have cleaned up a lot of the weird issues we had when this phone was still under embargo. All three sensors can shoot 4K 120, and a recent update replaced the 8K 30 that had been removed from an update prior. Now we can't switch sensors while we're shooting a clip. You have to stop recording, switch sensors, and then start recording again. But it's just refreshing that all three of these just match. You don't have different features in different modes. Anything you can do in one can be done on the other two. The Axon app is definitely slower to navigate. It can be a little frustrating getting into menus and selecting the right options, but it has some fun extras like proper raw support for all three sensors where the Honor only has raw support for the main sensor. And the Axon includes focus peaking in your manual focusing so you can really make sure you're locking in critical focus. It's a feature I really wish we had on the Honor. I really think I think the Honor is a little easier to use, especially in a full auto HDR kind of way. And they both have excellent half inch telephoto sensors. It really is a nice perk stepping up to a bigger sensor when you want more reach, but the Axon is ultimately more capable hardware and it has the larger ultra wide sensor to boot. I'm giving the camera software win to the Honor. I'm giving the camera hardware win to the Axon. All right, lastly, in comparing these two phones, the ZTE has actually kept up on software updates a little better than the Honor. We're on the June Google security update. We got this before Samsung. And with a number of important camera fixes, like I mentioned, replacing 8K30 video. This is still super early for any phone, but it's almost impossible to predict which company will deliver more consistent updates and with longer OS support. In daily use, both our fast Android devices feature rich and skinned with a customized UI. I do have to give one productivity nod to the Honor though, where we get a proper desktop mode. The Axon has maybe the best version of the built-in Google desktop mode that I've used yet on Android 12, but the Honor desktop mode is neck and neck with Samsung DeX. That's a critical win. This phone right here could be a proper laptop replacement. Both phones are billed as high performance solutions. They both have Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 SOCs. These are crazy powerful and they run a little warm, but when you really put the rubber to the road, the Honor is the more performant phone of the two. I feel ZTE is probably doing a bit more of the thermal and performance managing. So especially once we get into heavier lifting tasks like audio podcast, video rendering, batch photo processing, the Honor is near a tier where it's just behind phones like the Moto Edge Plus. The ZTE is often falling behind some of the cooler running phones like my Vivos. And I would also say that this runs similarly for gaming. The Honor is going to let you keep a higher tier of performance, which will run the phone warmer and it will tank your battery life faster. ZTE is probably better for those more casual gaming experiences where you're not concerned about having the peak ultra fastest frame rate but it's still a very capable workhorse device. If the user wants to control and manage with some of the settings, the battery settings and the screen refresh settings, the Honor is the more professional of the two. If the user does not want to have to manage all of that and wants the phone that's going to deliver more consistent battery life and keep phone temperatures better in check, the ZTE is gonna be your jam. And that's probably where we should start wrapping this up. Shopping in markets where both phones will ship, the Honor is consistently more expensive. This is eight gigs of RAM with 256 gigs of storage. The Magic 4 Pro sells for around 949 pounds in the UK. The 12 gigs of RAM, 256 gig storage Axon sells for 809 pounds on the ZTE home site. There's a 140 pound difference and that ain't nothing to sneeze at. So while the Honor is the more powerful performer in most tests, I think I have to give the overall price to performance win to the ZTE. And honestly, pitting these two against each other, getting competition like this means 
we all win. These are phones offering specific and unique features, premium performance and build, and giving traditional popular phones a great run for their money. At MSRP against a Galaxy S22 Plus, sure, but the ZTE is even undercutting the 256 gig flavor of the iPhone 13. Not the 13 Pro, the regular two camera, 60 hertz screen, iPhone 13. Staging these comparisons is always fun, especially when I can find some sort of theme. You know, these are the phones that have been resurrected for the gadget lab. But genuinely, since the days of the Axon 7 and the Honor 8, I can't tell you how happy I am to have both of these labels back in my office. And it's nice when you can get a handle on both phones and feel pretty confident that the people who pick them up they're gonna be in for a really good time. So I will of course leave some links below for more information on both the ZTE Axon 40 Ultra and the Honor Magic 4 Pro, where you can shop these bad boys online. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel. All of the support lately has been absolutely fantastic. Those of you who are checking out the links in my video descriptions, if you hit my home site, somegadgetguy.com, or if you're shopping a little merch, that kind of stuff really does help keep production rolling on this channel. But the huge shout out goes to the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is basically the coolest collection of tech pals in the universe. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Twitch, not so much on the Facebooks and the Instagrams, and I will catch you all on the next comparison.